Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our Redbird Esports live stream. You know, today we're on YouTube, so a bit different from the normal Twitch stream, but today we're going to be bringing you uh, round two of the Illini Esports Invitational for League of Legends, where we've got Redbird Esports facing off against uh, Northeastern University Black in a best of three series. Today I'm joined by Terry Gigatron Coughlin. How you doing today, Terry? I'm good, Sam. How you doing? You know, can't complain. Uh, not used to the noon starting time, as we usually start around, you know, two or three. But hey, I'm here for it. All right. You know, I, I uh, definitely love it when um, I had to start at ten last week for our <laughs> for our high school invitational. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how uh, mm -hmm. today goes and everything. A little bit later, so it'll be nice. Uh, we got a good, quick. I think. Uh, Three game series here, so I think it'll uh, be pretty nice just to kind of have a relaxing game to watch. We don't, we got no best of fives, you know, we ain't stuck till like midnight or one like we usually are when we're together. Yeah, <laughs> and plus, you know, in the top side, we've got GFP and that that one subbed out for ShamWow and Hyper, respectively. So it's always nice to kind of um, see those two get a bit of time in the spotlight. Exactly. So that, that that's what I'm enjoying is kind of they get some spotlight time. It'll be great. I don't know. Won't be an issue or anything. Uh, I, I, we don't get to see the boys too much. You know, we we want to want to see them more. So mm -hmm. I mean, hype, hyper and sham. I'll steal that thunder sometimes. So I think it's a. Uh... What are you doing? See you later, brother. All right. See. You. All right. Love for my dad just comes in. <laughs> um. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, I think a fun game today. We I don't think I've seen Northeastern play yet in a series, but uh, looks yeah, like I don't think I have either. But looks like we're hopping right into draft. Immediate Udyr ban from ISU. You know, makes sense. Best jungler in the game, probably up there with Hecarim. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you got Volley Bear also is getting banned out. One of the better ones right now for jungle. Got great clear. With a improved healing, it's great right now. Yeah, we've been seeing Hyper play a lot of the Volley Bear, but I'm not sure if GFP has been playing it. So maybe, you know, the, they thought Hyper was going to break it out and, you know, GFP subbed in. But like you said, generally Volley Bear is a lot better of a jungler now due to the recent buffs. Yep, we're going to see ISU's banning out. Uh, Galio and Ivern here, both really good. I believe uh, their juggler from uh, Northeastern plays Ivern a lot and super strong right now. Mm -hmm. And the Thresh and Seraphine bands coming against Illinois State makes sense. Love the Tristana first pick. Um, it's just such a great champion right now. It can go bot and mid, do well in both. I know that, you know, it, it, both players on ISU can play it, so the great flex. Yeah, it's really great flex. I mean, that's that's why I kind of I kind of like that she's kind of like one of those more meta picks now that you can fluctuate around and not just feel like she's always bot lane. But we do see Kaisen Hecarim is picked up from Northeastern. Yeah, the Hecarim after we left open and the Morgana hover. This is pretty interesting because it could actually be Morgana jungle, which is something that has really been popping up ever since the jungle changes to her, because she just has an insanely fast clear speed. So. That's really the one-way ticket to being a meta jungler is just clear speed. Yeah, clear speed is always great. And, again, that's that's the name of the game right now, like you said. So um, definitely one of the better ones, I would say, on the board right now. So I'm glad that, again, she's kind of getting some life. You know, I, I like when these flex picks can not be always just aligned to, you know, their usual lanes and everything like that. What do you see? A Scion hover. Oh. David. Mm -hmm. I like the Scion. He's a pretty generally safe blind pick to take out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been good. I mean, that's, that's that's the thing that I like is it's pretty easy. You just kind of farm up, make sure you get tanky, and go from there. But we have a gangplank response coming out from Northeastern. Yeah, it's hard for me to really say, you know, where it's favored, because I've seen both the Gameplank and the Scion just take over the lane, so it's hard for me to grasp on it, but 
game plan good early with the parley poke, but once Scion, you know, gets a lot of that armor stacking, you can kind of fight back. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the thing is when when you're able to kind of have that poke to be able to fight back as well as just being able to be tanky just to be like, all right, keep poking me. Every time you move up, I'm just going to smack down my uh, axe on the ground and knock you up or slow you down or whatever whatever the case is, however long he holds it. So, But, yeah, we're going to see a Malphite band come out of ISU here. I think that's a perfectly good choice. I mean, you have Hecarim right now and Kaisa, who kind of set up really well with it, and you have Gangplank, who is very annoying in that case. So definitely would set up very well for... Uh, unstoppable force ultimate. Oh no. We uh, get Isaiah and Bardance. Nice. Isaiah's pretty interesting because it pretty much says that Northeastern believes this Tristan is going straight mid, which, you know, might be the case, but it's still a flex pick. And looks like Illinois State might just kind of be trolling their bands unless their mid laner plays a lot of Malphite Alessandra. Could be the case, um, but don't know about that. So, oh, we got Leona. Okay, okay, okay. I like the Leona. It's a pretty good match with the Kaisa. You know, you're able to stack that plasma passive. Also gives you some nice engage options alongside the Hecarim. And with this Alistair Hover, you know, it, it does kind of back up what we were saying, where this Morgana is actually going to be in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Most likely in the jungle. Ooh, the Silas Hover. Got some pretty good ults to steal so far, and now with uh, Northeastern on last pick, you know they they got to take that into account with who they're going to put into the mid lane. And Oriana getting picked up, I think that's perfect. Kind of rounds out their team very well. You have a lot of AOE uh, ultimates coming out. You have uh, the can't play ult. You have Leona's. Uh, um, Solar Flare, you have the Shockwave, all, all perfectly set up to kind of help out the Kaisa and Hakarim there. Mm hmm. So, looks like we're going to get into game draft real quick here. Let's keep going on that. Yeah, it looks like we've got a pretty exciting game in our hands here. It's not too often you see the Morgana jungle popping up, but. Uh, with the recent patch now live, maybe that's going to be coming uh, a lot more often than we usually see. Yeah, and I, I think that's the big thing too is, you know, when a lot of these champions get updates, you know, they're, I think good quality of life updates because, you know, I, I feel like jungling is kind of um, saturated with only like four champions five champions maybe mm -hmm. so <laughs> we could maybe we could break out some more i think it would be really good in that case uh yeah guess what she got that's right she kept it up there but yeah man I i'm excited to see it i think it'll work well with the alistair here uh you get a good uh binding off and uh but polarize it's gonna be so good it ain't gonna be funny yeah, there's just so much pick potential, because if you get hit by one CC, you got a Silas, Alistair, Scion on top of you, and a Morgue Bind. You're going to just be sitting there for five years or until you die. Yeah, and that's going to be the kind of crazy thing just to think about is, like, all right, any, anyone lands something, you're probably going to get blown up if, if another person's there in that process. So that's mm -hmm. that's why these, like, three to four man ganks are going to be great. Uh, especially on bot lane, or if they roam up to mid, or, you know, heaven forbid there's a, a fight in the river jungle there, so uh, it'll definitely be interesting. I'll say that. I kind of I kind of want to see how this uh, Silas goes. I don't think I've actually seen Drew on Silas. 
Yeah, it's not something you see too often. Normally, because Silas is kind of a counter pick, right? Because you can't blind him, because then they just pick five bad ultimates and you're SOL. But I always enjoy seeing the champion because you, you can do a lot with him. He's kind of like an AP Yone. Not really, but hmm. he's very flashy and I enjoy casting him. Hey, we always love flashy plays. So, yeah. but yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Better to, who better to play flashy champions than Drew Dozer? Right. <laughs> you right. You definitely right there. Uh, yeah, so so what do you what do you kinda think? You looking at everything right now, looking at both sides. Uh who who are you giving the edge to right now? Um, well it's kinda hard because you know the Morgana jungle kinda throws a wrench into things because I don't actually know how good it is. Like yeah, the clear speed's good, but what what how good is a Morgana gank, right? But with the CC setup and a lot of Illinois State's lanes, I think it can work out. And that's why I'm going to slightly give the edge to Illinois State. Um, not even just because of their team comp, but, you know, um, we've seen this team play. They have such great synergy, and, you know, they're a bit higher ranked than the enemy team, so I expect this game going Illinois State. Yeah, and uh, I would probably say the same thing too, but, I mean, I, I also like Northeastern's just – Comp. I mean, it, it, it's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I think they drafted pretty decent here. You get a hacker room. You have Oriana and Leona kind of work together. You set up well for Kaisa. Kaisa can get some peel. And again, Gangplay can just kind of be there and exist and just do that. Do, yeah. Jeez, I can't talk already. Eat coffee. Um, just do that poke that uh works so well with them in that case. So. Yeah, I, I think it would. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see who kind of comes out on top for this first game here. But yeah, if I had to choose, I think I think I'm gonna go ISU only because I want I want to see the Silas and the Morgana come out of these two. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like you said, you know, Northeastern does have a solid comp behind them, so it's by no means uh, decided in draft, and we'll just have to see how it kind of unfolds on the rift. YouTube gaming, yes, that's that's name of the game today, at least for us. Those uh, those pesky CS goers took our uh, Twitch away from us today, so you know. Uh, gotta share I, the love. Yeah, we gotta share the love, you know, once in a while. But uh, I think I gotta, I think I go yell at our uh, broadcasting and production manager mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> But at this point, we are winding down with our spectator delay here. We are going to take a break and set up for the game. So we will be back shortly.
Welcome everyone to the Why Night Esports Invitational between I uh, was it Rebert Esports versus uh, NU Esports and yeah, or any esports technically any U jeez mouthful of stuff right there for Northeastern. Uh, right now we see Northeastern's on blue side and ICU's on red side. I didn't have to fix stuff today, so I love it when I predict right. Uh, speaking of which. Uh, which dragon are you going for, for Soul? Soul, I'm gonna go towards Infernal Soul this game. That's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I... Kinda wanna go with that, or I'm thinking we get in air. I, I'm gonna go air. We'll do that. Okay, okay. But, but, but my my real one is uh, we're gonna go with uh... damn it no, wrong. Earth Wind and Fire is 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 the three drakes that we should get, <laughs> but perfectly fine. Looks like we're gonna see pretty standard stuff right now. Oh, big trades coming out from Two Dozer. Yeah, just forced not a pot. Nothing too crazy, but not too much power in the level one Silas. Asuka just taking a lot of damage from that ISO Q and the Leona stun. But yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy happen, happening right now. The jungle path meta is really just an all a full clear back, get a gank off, rinse and repeat. And Dead Dead's getting some good poker already early on to this uh, gank hunt here. Mm -hmm. Gotta kind of be careful though, his game plan's got some pretty good sustain. He's got the three pots in the inventory plus the uh, removed scurvy. Exactly, and since he's opting to get biscuits, you know, he's trying to get some uh, extra mana kind of going on for him and everything here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taking a lot more early. Probably should be chewing right now. Yeah, Looks like we're gonna see. Too. Yeah, like I don't know. Oh, hyper or the hyper. Can't be just mow through that scuttle quick. Yeah, but Illinois State's got to be watching out for uh, no conceptions here, as he's coming around from try to get a potential first gank here. Gonna opt back in the bush though, nothing gonna happen there. His Trudos is just kind of trading in the mid lane, but he does break it. And it looks like they're gonna go for a good Zenith Blade on a Disconnector, but can they find much more? The Disconnector coming down from Dead Dead is going all in onto the Kaisa, but can they find the kill? Ignite is popped and first blood goes over to Nasca. Disconnector flashing out, gets the rocket jump away. Looks like Blue Sky Cream could be the next target, but not much damage left at their disposal, and only State can actually turn that gank into a first blood is GFP. May find the Oriana, but a nice minion block keeps him safe under tier 2. Yeah, just try not to bully out Oriana here, he needs to. Oh. Now they gotta be careful, is Hecarim gonna have to go for chickens instead, but the stun does not land on the game plank, but the Dark Binding does. It looks like GFP is gonna be the target, gets the uh, smite on the chicken, but not gonna be enough. No, not going to be enough in that case, but I, I think we need to kind of respect that, I don't know, we're going to, early on, she's decent, but again, she's going to our Harvest, she kind of needs to get stacks going, um, just to kind of respect the, you know, the team a little bit. Just make it... careful, he doesn't have Flash here. Uh-oh. Just kidding. It's, uh, well, you know, sorry, with that said, um, even though they did get the Morgana, it took two flashes, and just looking at mid lane, Oriana's wave is pretty screwed up, so Silas is going to be able to catch this fat wave just walking back to lane, and he's going to be feeling pretty good uh, since all he gave over was an assist. Oh, yeah, he 
guys. going for a trade, but Hecarim's here, GFP just below to maybe find an answer. Dark Binding available, doesn't get it on the no conceptions. Ooh, JP gonna face check right on those conceptions. Gets the shield off, so he's not gonna be pushed away. Yeah. Looks like they want to take the two v two though. Does have the Hecker Molt available, and he's only level five, so even he's not gonna get it. And GFP finds a kill. Yeah, just a lot of aggression coming out from Redbirds here. They have a lot of setup and. It's doing really well right now for them. I mean, especially since now you have Onslaught of Shadows on Drew Dozer. Anything can happen. You can get an mm -hmm. easy kill on uh, Oriana here because she's only level 5. Yeah, you know, it's what we talked about in draft is that Old Night State just has such great pick potential. Is Nasca going to go right on the Blue Sprite team? It doesn't get the W into the wall, unfortunately, but a dive possibly coming down from Old Night State. Gets the Dark Finding, gets a stun. Shockwave's not going to save you there. And Drew Dozer finding a kill is. No Conceptions might try to make something happen here in the bot lane. The only nice day looks like they're just going to take this with GFP coming down, though. Good combo onto the Hecarim. Going to be taking a lot of damage now. The GP will coming down. Xenoblade on the Alistair, but is it going to be enough to kill him? Ignite popped, and Blue Sky Cream finds a kill on himself. Now Oriana coming from base. Can they find much more? No, it doesn't look like they're going to take anything. No, not going to be the case, but oh man. It is doing some chunks. Got some good damage, but you just got back to lane and now you're half health. So, you know, I'm not sure that's a net positive. Is Oriana going to be the next target with another binding finding its target? And it's Disconnector now, 101 on the Tristana. And a TP coming down on the top lane. Jevum's got to be careful. Scion's low, but Silas should just be able to solo you here. And look yeah, at that. We'll be just giving so the kill worse. right over to Judo there. It's crazy to think too, because like, it, it, it's Silas. So you think, okay, you know, he's just he's just here to steal ults and everything. But Silas just has such good bursts right now that yeah, he can just take on pretty much anyone. He's got a lead. He's got that two hundred one lead and the what about twenty math twenty four CS lead right now on Oriana. Yeah, he's he's definitely doing real well. Yeah, that Silas is massive. He's up about 1,500 gold, and Oriana is not a champion you want to play from behind, so I don't think Phoenix is going to be, you know, having a real fun game in the next 10, 15 minutes. Still here, they do have the Unbreakable Will, but actually Biff's the Hex Flash over the wall. Big old Biff. They can still go for it, though. It's not a real precise play to tower dive in Oriana with an Alistair. I don't think it's that hard. I mean, all it is is he has to go in with Drew Dozer. Just gotta have a pulverize, you know, just kind of get the lockdown. Drew has to go in with his chains and, you know, use the shockwave there and, you know. Great CC lockdown coming in out of Phoenix. And then Drew's two stacks richer, but Tristana jumping right onto an oink. Flashing in to get the jump reset. Uses the killer instincts to get away, but a flash combo from Nasca is going to secure the kill. Disconnector now 2 0 is no conceptions. Going for a gank in the mid lane, gets the ultimate off. The Oriana Shockwave isn't going to be enough to keep Drudozer alive. GFP just on the flank, gets the black shield off, but shut down will go over to no conceptions. And no congestion just playing it very well there. You still had uh, Blue Sky coming up. But yeah, but just look at the CC chain. Gameplank gets the orange off, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Tries to flash over the wall, but it's too thick. And this is just not Northeastern's game. They get one step forward, two step back, really. Yeah, but they're able to kind of take this dragon right here for Mondrake kind of freely. So... But we see that, uh, looks like uh, the response that GFP is going to take that Rifty here away from them. Yeah, and that's really great from Northeastern because for the, the game state Illinois State is in, you would expect them to be able to take Dragon pretty freely. Your bot lane's 201. Um, Alistair's been roaming the map having prior the whole time. And instead, Northeastern still gets the Dragon, so they should be feeling pretty good about that. And, you know, Nazca does get the Herald, which is nice, but... 
Personally, I'll take an early dragon over Herald any day of the week. We tried to go for a combo, but a great stun from Bot Blue Sky Cream keeps Alistair at bay, but they're jumping right onto the Kaisa here. A lot of damage coming down, but not enough to secure a kill either way, really. Yeah, it's just a lot of damage just to bully them out of lane and, you know, kind of have a jungler come down here as they see the uh, good old no conceptions is here. But, oh no, we have a roam coming down to this bot lane. Yeah, it looks like they might just try to cut him off walking back into the tier 2 and Leona's got no mana. A good dark binding onto her and a flash ult from Drew Dozer to secure two kills. And suddenly he's back to just where he was before he was shut down. Five stacks on the Dark Seal, 150 gold bounty over his head. And if we check the gold here, t yeah, now over 2,000 gold ahead of Oriana. Yeah, and that's big too, because if you can get a good lead on your bin leader, and obviously, you know, you're roaming very well with the Morgana right now. The Morgana's 2 1 and 4, like you talked about. You know, these updates have uh, definitely given her some good quality of life that I think. Uh, now, since, you know, we have the tank meta usually in the bot lane for supports, you can kind of see now a caster going in another lane, which is great. Mm -hmm. but we look at everything else, we kind of see some good CS leads. We see almost basically a 30 CS, well, yeah, 30 CS lead in bot lane right now. Uh, you got about good leads still kind of going on to Northeastern as well. You got CS lead for Hecarim here, as well as Gangplank right now. So uh, that's great. I mean, it's kind of what they need to have to kind of get back that little bit for these two solo laners. Or two, one solo laner and the jungler. Yeah, but the question is, you know, is the 10 CS lead on the Gangplank going to matter when he's probably not going to be able to scale, scale this game? Because it's 9-3, to three, Illinois State's up almost 6,000 gold. And they're just pushing the tempo of the game so fast, but as I say that, GFP may have found himself caught, gets the Black Shield to try to dodge Leona a little, but jukes it anyway. Found in the middle of three, but can he get the Kaisa? He's doing a lot of damage, actually, but shut down. We'll go over to Hecarim. Picked up by Drudozer instead. Finds a two-man shockwave from Phoenix, but disconnected now, jumping into the fight. Only States is looking to steamroll this one. Can't she flash him with the wall? She can't, but the chains will follow. Phoenix will be killed. Triple kill over to Drudozer. Yeah, uh, Drew is just performing very well today on the Silas. The Silas has just been able to kind of just pick off everyone here. And I'll look at it. He's at the 10 uh, stacks in his Dark Seal. So he's definitely going to switch over to his Magi. No, conce no Conceptions is dead here. Yeah, look. Look at the CC chain. Drew does over the wall. We'll find another kill. And yeah, he's really feeling himself after this game. 8 1 and 1. 10 stacks on the Dark Seal. I'm not going to be too surprised if we see that turn to a Magi's. Yeah, definitely gonna turn on the Magi's there. It's gonna, I guess, like you said, he's just performing very well and being able to kind of. Oh, I'm just trying to steal it. Ooh, Kaisa's got to be careful. It does get a nice stun from Leona to stop him from the headbutt, but Scion's still here. Good stun on Leona. Just look at that damage from the Kingslayer and ISU Nasca finding the kill with an ignite. Yeah, Nasca just performing very well here too. I mean, he's been able to kind of set up lane and oh no. Yeah, in Illinois State, they're just playing team deathmatch here. Drudozer is sitting on 2,000 gold right now. There's no reason for him to just be out here farming kills, but you know, he's at that point where he's so strong he just can. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just basically a hardcore TDM going on right now for uh, Drudozer here, and uh, that's the ISU. They're just been able to. Freely get a lot going on for them, and that's great. I mean, they kind of want to take this lead early, especially with this comp, because, like you said, if it goes a little too late, now you have a couple of people that scale. Well, no. Yeah, Kaisa's going to be trying to look for a way out. Flashes over the wall, but, you know, that's a flash for nothing. Illinois State is going to take that trade. They're going to take that trade any day of the week. Now it looks like they're going to set up for the second Drake here, which is going to be a fire Drake. So uh, I, I have a 50% chance to be right. That's going to be uh, your soul. Let's <laughs> say <laughs> no earth, wind, and fire. Can't make a September joke, but it's it's fine. It's totally fine. Hey, we got another, at least one more game <sighs> to make that joke. True, true. 
You know, it's worth noting Drew Desert did actually go for the Magi's, like I said, which I like to see, you know. And that could potentially be a win con for Northeastern. Will it be? Probably not. But if they are able to shut him down and kind of staunt or, uh, you know, shut down the Magi's, like they're looking to do right now, maybe. Your might just take this 1v2, though. Great stand stun onto the Hecarim. Does get the Onslaught of Shadows. He's just going to throw one back in his face. And GP, I don't think you're going to win this 1v1. Does have the barrels, but a second Kingslayer to kill the double, or to find the double kill. And Illinois State's going to be taking the bot lane in the meantime. Great flash headbutt pulverized from the Alistair. Can they find more? Shockwave dinner up the sign. Cube is not going to be enough. Disconnector finding a kill on a Kaisa. Blue Sky Cream is going to be the next target as Phoenix may be third to fall. Hiding under his turret for now. It doesn't look like Illinois State's going to grief that dive. But this should just be a free inhib. Definitely going to be a uh, free inhib. And it might be two if you think about it because they can take this one and you get the mid wave that's pushing right now. So the mid wave can crash into that mid turret and maybe they'll be able to get it. But looks like they're just going to take backs here. Uh oh. Hecarim ghosting again. Looks like he might want to go for it. But a great headbutt from Nasuka to keep him at bay. And it will be an actual surrender from Northeastern. Yeah, so first game is going to go over to ISU here, which is kind of crazy to think about, just because, I mean, I I wouldn't be surrendering this early. I would still make them play it out, personally, in my opinion. But, man, just great job by Ridebirds here, just to kind of get Drew going. With Disconnector, who also was deathless, along with Dead Dead. Dead Dead, you know, was in a lot of the fights and was still able to survive everything and didn't have to reanimate like he normally has to, you know, as his champion. So, mm -hmm. pretty good in that case here. Looks like, oh yeah, Let me switch. So, yeah, just a lot going on. Again, Drew Dozer. Let's look at, let's look at that damage real quick. 15k, man. Woo! Woo! 1,000 a minute for uh, how long that game was, nearly. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. But, yeah, you know, with that said, Illinois State is going to take the first game of this series. It's a best of three, so we should have at least one more coming at you. But, you know, you got to think about what is what is the mental of Northeastern after, you know, the 16, 17-minute surrender uh, in game one, you know? Yeah, 16 to 17-minute surrender. It, it, it's it's kind of crazy to think about because usually we don't, again, like, like I said, we usually don't see surrenders for the most part. It's usually just they play it out until the end, but... I think uh, no conceptions. The rest of the team kind of were like, you know what? Um, I think we're a little too far behind. And even if we tried, again, Jebum's just was just too far behind in the Silver Serpents. And, you know, if he can't get a, his upgraded uh, ultimates there, you know, and everything like that, he's just not going to be able to do much. So I think it was definitely warranted. But, again, a little, a little unfortunate. Like I said, I always like seeing games get played out. So, yeah, but, the GP is uh, a great pick for when, you know, it's a pretty chill lane because you're just going to generally find yourself a lead with your gold generating passive. But um, when every other lane is losing the game, uh, GP is not going to be your savior as we saw that game. Right. I mean, GP is not going to be a savior. I mean, you have to look at, like, GP, again, is just more to kind of win lane and then try to help out elsewhere, you know, with his... Um, Cannon Barrage, so, you know, Cannon Barrage can, uh, how about that case? Great. And if not, then, you know, it's kind of like, all right, well, now, now I have to physically be there. And, you know, if you can't TP down or just can't rotate there in time, yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying in that case. But mm -hmm. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up for our second game here as I'm getting an invite. So we will see you guys shortly.
All righty, we are back for Game 2's draft. And we see Northeastern Esports is going to be doing again that Thresh ban. That's Nasca. Awesome. Makes sense. It's... Makes sense, yeah. Nasca loves his Thresh. Thresh great in the current meta. Might as well take it away from him. I agree, and especially this this Iron pick that I think, again, he's kind of scared of because Iron just performs very well right now, and, you know, it, it it's just... Crazy to see sometimes. Looks like Ice is going to take out Galio here. And we see Northeastern responds with Lucian. Both, I think, are good bands again. You're looking at Galio team fight as well as uh, kind of can take away a lot of uh, the Tristana aspect, essentially, and everything like that. So. Looks like they're going to have to take out Bear again. Uh, Volley Bear, again, still performs very well, but uh, can definitely uh, be an annoyance to deal with in a mm -hmm. team comp game like this. Um, Who do we be at this point? Malphite, yep. Will be the blue side Tristana pickup first for Northeastern and a potential Seraphine answer for Illinois State. Now we'll probably see that in the mid lane because due to a bug fix, she's not as powerful with the Moonstone Staff Flowing Water in the bot lane. And you had, you know, the double mage pickup Seraphine Morgana for Illinois State. They're feeling confident in this draft already. Yeah, they're feeling very confident here just because of the fact that, again, Seraphine does very well with the mid lane. She could still go support. Yes, it's not as consistent, like you said, but with the silly bug that's around. But, ooh, we get it. We get it. Kane, baby. Kane's going to be trying to put a lot of pressure onto ISU here in this case. And, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to kind of see who they paired up with mid, if it's the Tristana or if it's going to be a different mid laner. Yeah, it definitely will be interesting because we saw that um, when Illinois State picked Tristana, it seemed like Northeastern assumed that was going mid lane, so they just banned a ton of bot lanes, but then you just rotate a bot lane, and now you just wasted half your draft phase, so it's really the mind games behind that. The Kane pick to me is pretty interesting, as it doesn't seem like it's something no conceptions plays too often. But, you know, maybe it's the hidden dark technology Morgana mm -hmm. counter. I think it can be. I think I think it's just gotta look at okay. The the problem is is you got black shield, so if you go either blue or red form, you know, you're not gonna get the slow off as easily or the knock up as easily in that case. But again, raw damage you can sustain, be that more takey if you go at red form, or again you can just go for the straight burst that still would work, I think, very well into Morgana in that case. Yeah, the only thing that really concerns me about the pick is in the current meta, we usually see Kane go, you know, the Shadow Assassin with the Dark Harvest Full Lethality one-shot build. And the problem with that is if you get hit with a Morgana Binding, you're just going to die. You know, Ross, maybe he'll be able to survive uh, just due to his innate takiness and lifesteal, but there's no way you're ever surviving a Dark Binding from Morgana as the Shadow Kane. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be in... Easy one for them in that case, but yeah, looks like um, Ice used to kind of be in a couple of different ones here. We see uh, Northeastern takes out uh, Tom Kedge and Scion here, and Rebirds respond with uh, Set and Lissandra. The NASA's pick is interesting. Yes, uh, looks like we go on stacks, baby. So. Yeah, I already got Dark Harvest stacks going on Morgana. We got stacks going on Sano. We got stacks going on Nasus here. Oh, what are we going to get next? The Vladimir would be interesting. I haven't seen a Vladimir in what feels like years, really. Which is, you know, a blessing and a curse. But looks like we're having a pretty spicy game on our hands, and drafts has not even ended yet. Hey, you know what? I love it. You got to think, oh, of course. I'll draft <laughs> Dude, I hate being in the studio. I need to switch out of the studio at this point. My stuff is just bugging out today. God, I love it. Anyways. Yeah, we're just seeing 
a lot here right now. Oh man, we're seeing Kaisa got picked up and uh huh. wait a second. Um Was that a Nasus jungle? I don't know what we're looking at. Or is that just two top laners and two support two top laners and three supports um for Illinois State Strap. Where will they go? Yeah, Sun is obviously going ADC, right? We can we can assume that much. Yeah, probably Sun at ADC. Like, it could be Seraphine too. Don't get me wrong, it could be her. Going ADC, you still have Senna going uh Jungle or not jungle, wow. Support in that case. And then you can have Morgana Jungle with your top and NASA's mid. Could work that way, or it could be Morgue mid. Um Definitely would be interesting here to kind of see what goes on with that. And you know, at least now that we're jumping right in the champ selects, we can see where in the hell Illinois State's champions are going. Exactly, I think it's help, going to help be... us clear up some confusion. Yeah, uh, I'm st I'm still really confused because I don't know where that's going to go. Because York York are going to assume is top at this point, so York's top. Now uh, you can either put Nasus or Morgana Jungle. Who could throw Santa and bot lane. Or mid. She could go mid, baby. It sounds really stupid, but I wonder if it's like Nasus Senna bot lane. Cause we see Senna usually with the fasting Senna, right? With like a Tom Kench or maybe a Scion. Oh. But you just give Nasus all the stack. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that, that would be weird because I feel like he still gets poked out. Pretty hard because it's Kaisa going into him. Definitely. Boy, I could be wrong in that case here. I mean, he still has some good sustain. Still able to do a lot with his kit. So, I don't know. Especially the siphoning strikes. The siphoning strikes where you get him stacking up. Plus, every hit, obviously, you're still getting some life uh, steal back with it. So, I think it'll be interesting to see what they start choosing here in this case. Is the York top like we said? Now Morgana or Nasus, what's the pick? Yes. <laughs> I was right. Could still be Seraphine support. Yeah, it won't be Seraphine support in that case, but I think that's interesting, really, honestly. What we're opting to choose here. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see how it goes. Where is what I want? Jeez. Oh. oh. What'd you boys do? Oh no. Mid has to buy Triss. Slight technical difficulties. Yeah, you know how it is. Uh, when you when you don't have uh, those uh, magical unlocked accounts and everything like that, it takes a little bit in that case. As obviously we see the good old green potion uh, spiciness, you know, coming out from uh, northern eastwards here, or northeastern eastwards here. Jeez, I'm never gonna say it right today. I'm like, don't know why. Uh, Back into it again, getting everything going. I think we know the bands. We can just, you know, just, just, just run through the A's, I think, at this point. They probably have to have it right, you know, because they have to double for all this stuff. Mm. Yada, yada. So. So, yeah, so it's going to be a Nasus bot. That's, that's just... Okay. That's something. It's something, all right. Like you said, probably that starving Senna in that case, and yeah, just being able to do, do a lot with Nasus there. Jeez, that's that's a uh, gonna be one scary boy to deal with. 
could be, but at the same time, you know, on paper, it sounds pretty awful against the Leona uh, Kaisa. But hey, you know, it, with how last game went, even with that said, it's hard for me to give the edge to Northeastern. Yeah, I think it's still a little hard in my case, too, because the Vlad and the York, I don't think it's going to do great in... Yeah, I mean, you have Tristana going against Seraphine. These are kind of some typical mid laners here. You see also Kane again, which, uh, I mean, that full lethality, but obviously has been the aspect, like you said, that all players have been going, but might be a red form game just to make sure that, you know, you can survive a lot of the burst that's going to come out of Morgana and the rest of the team. Mm hmm. Now, what I will say is uh, Illinois State's team this game does lack a lot of the uh, CC setup from last game. Sure, they've still got the Morgana, but before, you know, you had the Scion uh, charge Q, you had Alistair combo, you had Silas chain, all to set up these ganks, and that's kind of missing now. So, I am curious to see how that'll change the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think the big thing, too, is you got to look at uh, Seraphine's got some lockdown. You have Senna, who has some lockdown, too, as long as she aims it right. Same thing with Morgana. You got a couple slows coming out of different people here. So I think it could be good in that case because, again, all you're really trying to do is just slow so Nasus can just mow people down, you know, with his siphoning strike. Same thing with Senna. Senna's just trying to get a lot of her procs off onto... Um, Enemy champions, so she can start getting those stacks built up and everything from her abilities. So I, I think that's kind of worthwhile in that case. Again, it's more a uh, leaning phase dominance, and then you you kind of play to play to win that way. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how it goes. What do you what do you, what do you what do you think about this draft, though? You know, for for Northeastern here, it's uh it's been a little different, you know, compared to the last one. Um, I'm not a fan of the Kane of Vladimir, but beyond that, you know, it's fine. Uh, the rest of those champions are all good and well, but I just don't see the Kane and Vladimir really being able to do anything, because like we saw with the last game, the Vladimir, like the GP, has to scale, but I feel like GP is, you know, better and more consistent in that sense, whereas Vladimir, you can really get screwed over early and um, just fall so far behind it won't matter. So I'm, I'm overall I'm not a huge fan of the draft, but we'll, we'll have to see how they prove me wrong as they usually do once I start talking like this. Uh, you know we all always have our, our lovely, lovely cast of curse when we talk about a team and then say something and then you know things go wrong. Like you know, we've always been cursed with their uh, game five, so we've always pretty much doing it. So, um, in this case, yeah, I don't know. I think it's gonna be interesting. I think it'll be. And again, like we said, a fun, spicy game, you know, between the two of them. I think that's perfectly fine. So, um, we'll see, though. As I mean, again, we're, we're, we're getting kind of close to our spectator delay here. So, I think we're going to take a short break here. We will uh, see you guys shortly as we set up for game two. And hopefully mm -hmm. my slobs does not break again. <laughs>
Alrighty, and we're going to be back for game two between Redbird Esports versus Northeastern Esports here. Uh, Redbirds are up 1-0 here, uh, but oh, we see we see a stat coming out of right now, Northeastern. Huh. Uh, oh, no. Yes, it looked like a potential invade, but a good stack from, or not a stack, but a five point from Red Breeze Sports will keep him safe. It's all you really need sometimes, it's just a good five point. Kind of just helps set uh, protection for the invades here. And yeah, oh. Dude, does it did not get to stop the back off of uh, Keen there. So, yeah. Um. You see red start from Kane, it looks like. I don't think it really needs to start red. Like like most of us know, you could just go do chickens and then come back to it. So But it looks like with that uh right ward there from Redbird Esports, uh might be able to see this path that you kinda come out. Yeah, and Redbirds will have a slight advantage since they do have that uncleared ward by ward by chickens. Um, both junglers can pretty much assume what the other's going to do. Um, Morgana, obviously going to full clear just like last game. So it shouldn't be too many surprises in the end. Dude, it bugged out again. I swear. I hate slobs. I need to switch my programs. So anyways. Um, yeah, just not much really going on here, though. They try to do a five-man invade, but... Didn't work out in the favor of them. So, that's fine. But, uh, Oink taking a lot of damage in this bot lane here. Already dropped a half health before level 2. Uh, you know, pretty slow start, but Grey Zenith played on to disconnect, or sorry, Nasca, looking to flash in, do get the first blood, Nasca's gonna be left alone, can he find a trade kill onto Oink? Pops the ghost, it looks like he's gonna try to escape rather than keep fighting though. Flash Zenith played from the Leona, but can Oink get in range? Not looking like it, a flash QE, will find the kill, disconnector now 1-0 on the Nasus, so don't think he's gonna be able to survive this Leona, unfortunately, but maybe with GFP coming down, ooh, Zenith played on, Dark Binding lands as well, more, or sorry, Leona will find her own kill, but surely GFP should get this trade kill back. Otto's coming down with the red buff. You're not getting yourself out of that one. Yeah, definitely not getting it out of yourself there in that case. I mean, it's just un unfortunate because you, you see Noska dies in the process, but this connector does get a kill and assist in the process, you know, on the Nasus here. So as he kind of starts uh, stacking up here. We'll be getting that case. Plus, you know, you give GFP a good Dark Harvest stack there, so it's kind of good in that case. Mm -hmm. Looked pretty bad for how it would have started filling the state with uh, Nasca just kind of getting deleted at the beginning of the fight, but all in all, they were able to turn it pretty well in their favor and get them out more or less on even. Yeah, you see, Oink and Blue Sky are uh, you know, getting pushed in pretty harder. Ooh, look at the trades with that. Yeah, able to do a lot of damage with the Arcane Comet, but Trudeaus are going to be the victim of a gank. Dark Finding will not land. No Conceptions. It's still going right in. Tristana flashing in to find a kill. No Conceptions finding a kill onto Trudeaus. Tristana going to be jumping down. GFP should go down as well. Bot lane is not going to be here to save. He gets the Scuttle speed up, but will be able to find his uh, way out with his life. Look at this poke damage coming down from Illinois State's bot lane. Still gotta always be careful of the all in from Blue Sky Cream and Oink, though. 
Yeah, Allen's really good, and you have no conceptions here who can definitely help out in that case. But yeah, but was... just definitely get in these uh, soul prisons here that are just a little, uh, well, not fun for him. Uh oh. Now, what's really interesting is uh, it looks like Disconnector is actually going full AP Nasus. He's got the Dark Sealed Door and start with an Amp Tome and inventory. And while, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's great in lane, um, I don't think it transitions too well in the mid and late game where you're, you know, fighting as a team. A lot of skirmishes going on, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, we'll definitely have to wait and see here. Looks like uh, they're taking more of that slower pathing here. Ooh, Tark goes on the disconnector. Ooh, Conceptionist might be getting collapsed here. GFP gonna come around with the Wolves, get the smite off to find the heal, but... Is it gonna be enough? Phoenix looking like he wants to join the fight. Dark Binding right on, and Drew Doze is gonna find his first kill of the game. And Tristana is not gonna be able to find much either. No, she's not. And, and, and that's the other thing I think people need to realize is... You know, if Trist and uh, Kane are there, yes, they do a lot more. But when Kane's by himself, he really can't do too much. And if both GFP and uh, Drew Doze are there, and both are champions. So he needs to kind of respect that, that a little bit until he gets either, again, more going towards that lethality build, or if he decides to get more of that tanky survivability build with the red form. Mm hmm. And, you know, uh, I'm still pretty confused by Illinois State's bot lane. You know, it's, it's getting work done. The NASA's up 12 CS, and they just got their second plate. So, fearing pretty well down there. Oh. Um, I think you just saw those three items just got bought. <laughs> We got three dark seals coming out of Redbirds right here. Man. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not gonna come down from Jevon to try to stop Dat Dat from the dive, but really just gonna sum for free. Yeah, it's an easy uh free stunt or free sum, like you said, so I think that's the big issue that people need to kinda worry about is hey, um sure you can Trade your ignite, but now when you try to go in again on me, uh, there's not much you can do. So, but that is gonna get some more plate gold here. Uh, you might actually go off to take the rift here. Ooh, so blue easy. sky cream could be in trouble. Gets a zenith plate on the disconnector, but this is not a three v three. It looks like northeastern wants to take blue sky cream. It's gonna be dropped below, but not a lot of tools left for Illinois State to really continue this chase. GFP is going head on though. Kane gonna be ulting right onto Nasca. Looks like he's trading back onto Disconnected now. Both are low, but a Dark Binding, and Tristana's jumping the wall to try to find a kill. Nuska finding a kill on to No Conceptions. Can he get the kill on the Sky Cream now? Yes, he can. Oh, just kidding! Is gonna actually die before, but the Tormented Soil finds their... Uh, no, it will just be the burn to find him. Drugos are now entering the fight. Does have the ultimate available. Ooh, and a great old Flash. Does get the cleanse off from Oink, so he's gonna be able to get out of there, no problems. And overall, a pretty good fight for Northeastern, but Illinois State is still going to hold the gold lead this game so far. Yeah, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. I thought Drew was going to troll uh, Disconnector there and get a little closer and let the bomb hit him. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, definitely didn't happen there in that case, so good job, uh, Drew, there. But, yeah, just a really good team fight, you know, from both sides. So now they're kind of... Evening out that little bit, you know. He's got to be careful. Cool. He's walking right into a hex slash Leona, but this is now going to be a three v two. Just kidding. Kane entering from the top side, and Phoenix is going to be shredded. And it doesn't look like Northeastern really has a way back into the skirmish, and that could just mean Dragon going right over into the hands of Illinois State. Yeah, I definitely think that's going to be the case here because you see, besides getting more of her stacks going, I know she's able to kind of just get. Farmed up the way that she needs to be. Let's kind of look at everything here. So we see Sai is at 33 stacks. Nasus is at 42 stacks. And we're at four uh, souls, you know, coming out from uh, mm -hmm. GFP here. Kane trying Kane's to go going. right on a Drudozer. Going to be found again by Blue Sky Cream. Walking his way back into bot lane. And this again, and you know, 3v3. Yeah, and Cage just realizes, you know, is what...
we can't do anything here. Let me just go farm and I'm just gonna reset ourselves here. But yeah, look at look at this burps coming out. I mean, again, I don't think we're gonna get a stack one coming out from Disconnector here, as obviously he's going Lost Chapter and Dark Seal, and obviously going the Comet build. So it's gonna be a good AP Nas coming out. So that's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's just really all inning to the poke comp. You know, it looks like we're getting, I think, three Ludens uh, built this game. Maybe an Everfrost, but we'll have to see. Oh, Ooh, Dark Binding onto the Leona, but bot lane's pretty far away. But with Drew Dozer from the top, it's not going to make a difference. Finding a kill on him. Now four stacks on the seal. Four stacks on to Seraphine there, man. That's crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. Vladimir Ghost igniting, but he's just going to be caught in the wall, so Dat Dat's just going to walk away. Two sums for nothing. Yeah, I think people kind of need to respect that, you know, from York here. York is just one of those ones that can be more of a commanding presence and just. You know, to take all the heat and be able to still mm -hmm. have Maiden do a lot, but oh. Your dozer got to be careful here. He does get the ult on at this time, but a great juke from No Conceptions will mean he's going to find that kill. Yeah, and it worked out in the, his favor and everything there. You know, uh, No Conceptions got what he needed. Uh, looks like he's going blue form, right? Definitely going blue form. He's got the Lethal Unit inventory plus the tier and Dark Harvest as well, so I would be appalled if he went Ross this game. <laughs> Hopping the Herald in the mid lane. The tower's not low enough to take it alone, though, so they're just going to be picking up some play gold there. As Illinois State almost taking the whole tower in the bot lane. Vladimir could be in trouble. He's going to be caught in the wall, but Dat Dat also being dropped pretty low. Ooh, but a flash Q will find the kill. Dat Dat finally making something happen in the top lane. And this is going to be a couple plates, too, because it is Mr. Mori, after all. Yeah, Mr. Mori being able to take two right away, and possibly three after this wave gets uh, cleared out here. Maidens do a lot of uh, work to it. Or not. Yeah, it looks like he just kind of wants to finish off this coal maybe before getting it back off as he's only 8 away. He's going to get the plate in the end though. Ooh, but a great solar eclipse from Blue Sky Cream Flash over the wall to find the kill, and Drew Dozer's just going to be instantly popped. No real recourse to that, and... Northeastern, you really like to see them go for these picks, as it's kind of going to be their way, not back into this game, as they're not that far behind, but it'll really help them make something, as Jevum's just taking an insane amount of damage. Has the cane here, but look, it's a 1v1 now by the time York's done. Not Calling in the cavalry though, but can York get the trade kill? Just barely. No conception is able to survive as Dat Dat in the four v one. Yeah, four v one. He barely survives. You know what? Um, the more you can shut down this Vlad, I think is really good. And the fact that Kane really is but isn't online at a little over fourteen minutes now. Yeah. Um, kind of worried a little bit. But, yeah, it's fine. Disconnector. Taking out the ward here. Trying to set up for this uh, second dragon coming up, which is going to be a fire drake. Uh, we have 50-50 chance, but you go all with. Um, hmm. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Cloud. Mountain. I'm wrong. Go ahead. Good job.
Kane looking like he wants to go into Seraphine. Doesn't have the ultimate available, and that's a lot of his damage with the passive reset involved. A flash charm is just going to barely survive, and a lot of damage traded back. But meanwhile, skirmish happening in the uh, upper, or sorry, bottom jungle. And his disconnector on the Naxxus now 2-1-0. Getting some value off that Everfrost buy. Not something I'd ever say. thought I'd say while, while casting. Yeah, uh, right? <laughs> sean has got to be careful. The root lands. They could go for something. Nasus is going to deal a lot of damage, but not enough to find a kill. As Vlad's going to flank turret down from GFP. Ulting in from Kaisa, though. Killer Instinct popped as Disconnector and uh, Nazca should just be walking up out of the jungle. Kane's here, though. He's looking to go for more. Surfing now going to TP into the mid lane. Isn't actually able to get the ult off and will die while in the body. As Jevon's got to be careful. There's some pretty good chase on side of Illinois State, but now Blue Sky Cream maybe to enter the fight. It's going to hex flash, turning up the, or stunning up the Seraphine. Just not over the wall. Doesn't know if they want to go in or not. And meanwhile, Death Dead on the flank. No mana on the Oink. Should be falling soon as the rest of the team goes on Sky Cream. Can Phoenix be the kill? But a good ult will actually find him. But no, or, uh, Senna's going to find that kill. Triple over to Nazca on the support. The real carry of this bot lane. Yeah, and this, this Senna is just doing so much right now. Like, look at, like, look at these stats. So she's got almost 75 stacks out. She's at 73. We got 150 wow. in disconnector. You know, again, he doesn't really need to have too much and everything like that. Um, we we have seen that, uh, like you talked about last game, if uh, you could shut down Dredozer, who's always taking these Dark Seals right now. Uh, Dark Seal doesn't really exist for him, so he's only got three stacks on there in that case. But yeah, GFP got seven Dark Harvest Souls. So oh, man, it's just. It's interesting to kind of watch this. This is a definitely uh, different matchup that we haven't kind of seen for champions in a while. Yeah, in this game, North Ethan, they don't even have like the Dark Seal or Drudos or Wincon because Drudos is not the focus point of this comp. He's playing Seraphine and he's 3 4. Just look at the bot lane here 5 2 on the Senna. Even the Nasus has found himself a bounty going Everfrost first item. So it's, it's really hard to be like, oh. Northeastern just has to do this to win the game because there's no simple answer to this. As it's really gonna kind of be on Illinois State to screw it up this game as they're finding themselves six, uh, 7k gold ahead. As Disconnector gonna be caught under turret, pops the Fury of the Sands, but it's not gonna be enough. Stunned up from the Leona, shut down over to No Conceptions. Yeah, No Conceptions just getting out a lot right now because he's able to shut down so much. Oh no, two bindings. Should be a pretty free catch. Great binding from. GFP to find that kill. Nasco finding himself 300 gold richer. Meanwhile, Jebim, he's just going to be dead coming out of this pool. Gets the heal from his ultimate. A flash Q from York isn't actually going to be enough to pick up the kill, but one E is all. It's going to take the goons jump down and dat dat now. 3 1 1 on the York. What's one more? The Isles remember. He's able to do so much. Right now. Oh my. Interesting. Yeah, look, she's half health. Got to jump right out, and this could be inhib taken, but Leona is going to back up, and Death Death's pretty low in mana. And Charm from Seraphine's actually going to go wide. Great. Ooh, just barely misses the bind from GFP, and they're just not able to land their abilities on the Oink, but they're going to take the Blue Sky Cream Leona as a consolation prize. And just look at that Q damage with the Sheen. Death Death's going to be low. Should die to the minions here. Trying to find his way out, healing with the Q, but even though he's able to dodge the abilities, just one auto is going to take it away, and Vladimir finds himself a kill with the Ghost. Ooh, Ghost Possum Disconnector does get the slow on the oink. Has to pop the cleanse to get out of the root. And it looks like Northeastern wants a fight, but they're just not all on the same page here. Tons of damage come down from the Vladimir and Kane, but isn't going to be enough. He's rooted up. Will just be killed. GFP finding a kill in the jet bomb. GFP tries to flash out, but he's not going to be able to. Great set of ult to get a ton of damage on the three members, but shut down over to Tristana. Disconnector and Drudos are going to be the remaining two members. Do they have enough damage to win this fight? But a TP from behind coming from Dat Dat. Execute damage coming out from Seraphine, but kill picked up by the Kaiso. Oink now going to be retreating back to the base. No conception tier as well, but Dat Dat is going to be in between you and the base. Yeah, Northeastern do get a lot of gold on their plate, but again, I'm not sure it's just going to be enough as the gold leads widen to almost 10k by now. Yeah, 10k gold lead. I mean, you're you're seeing that Dead is smacking your inhib turret here. 
Um, and just takes it pretty freely. Because they can't do anything to him. Like, look at this. Look at that trait. Oh. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I might have been wrong. I definitely could do something there. They burst him down pretty quick once the, uh, charge was put on to, uh, York there in that case. Yeah, that that you know, getting getting a little too confident there in the bot lane. But even with that kill, you know, it's like I said, I just don't really see a way that Northeastern can easily find themselves back in this game because it really is on ISU to just screw up. But Trudeau's are going to be one shot potentially with no conception. Does have the sun just pop at the ult? Should wait, but he pops it too early. Is going to even find the trauma over the wall under Tristana. Dark Binding's not going to land. Rocket jump to safer position. But the only state's feeling pretty healthy here, and a lot of poke damage come down on the oink. You gotta worry about Jebum as this, this is a 3v4 if they decide to take it, but it doesn't look like Illinois State gonna take it much further. No, not gonna be the case, because there's no reason to. Yeah, they look at yeah, we can play it safe. We know we don't know where the fourth person is when they show up. They're like, alright, you know what? Uh, York was on bot side. There's no reason. Good find on the Vladimir. Gets the Everfrost too. Not quite able to get the Senna W to pop, but is going to force the Vladimir ultimate out, which is a pretty nice team fight tool to have. And it may give Illinois State the confidence to just start up this Baron. Yeah, it should be no contest for this Baron. Pretty easy. Not a great tank though, Disconnector dropping pretty low, is going to force to eat up the honey fruit. It's the ghost to get a bit more mobility to try to juke out this potential cane, and almost State looks like they might want a 50-50 this. Could go very bad for them, but no, Morgana going to find the kill, GFP secures it, and York's in the base now with Baron buff, so Northeastern's really got to be careful with what fight they take here, as it could be the last of the game. They definitely need to respect this York. Even though he's not pushing up or anything, he's just there to have that Baron empowered minions. Yeah, I'm making it a tough call, but the Triumph is going to find more or, uh, Leona. Meanwhile, Trudeau's are going to find a kill on Oink. Jebum's going to be the next target. Got the empowered Q, but again, no ultimate to take this fight as Illinois State does a war on two fronts from the bot and top lane. Going to want to end it out here, and I'm not sure Northeastern's really going to be able to say much about it. As look, Leona jumping right in, but taking tons of damage. Kane now onto the back line, but look at the CC, just one shot. And Tristana's gonna jump out, but the goons will not relent. And double kill to that that triple kill to that that and Illinois State can take this series 2-0. And a pretty dominating fashion, it seems. Yeah, pretty dominating fashion today. Uh definitely an interesting game, I'll say that. Like I said, some some different picks that we haven't seen in a while, but yeah, no, I just want to get my hats off the Redbirds here. They're going to advance on to the next round of the Illini Esports Invitational. Um, yeah, let's look at uh, damage real quick here. Kind of kind of curious to see what we got. Can actually did the most. Okay, okay. I mean, that's that's true though. He did he did aggress on a lot of champions very quick, very easily. So, but I'll see it. you got anything else you wanna you wanna talk about or anything or you know I I don't think there's a ton to talk about that series. The Illinois State was kind of in the driver's seat for most of it, and well, yeah, we saw we saw a bit of trolling in the game two draft. Even then, uh, the game didn't look super close past the five six minute mark where Illinois State was able to just kind of snowball a lead with the AP NASA Senna poke bot lane. Yeah. But, hey, you know, I, I enjoy casting these kind of fun, more fun games where we get to see GFP and Death Dad take the stage as well. But, you know, with that said, congrats to Illinois State taking the game. Northeastern, unfortunately, not able to take the win. But hopefully we'll see you all for round three of this Invitational as Illinois State looks to continue this win streak. Yeah, stay tuned. We may have a stream later with this. If not, it might actually be streamed by Illini, so we'll see what happens. So, if this is our last call, 
We uh, hope you all have a good weekend. Enjoy yourselves. And uh, if you need any, uh, I should say, and if you uh, you do, definitely go outside. Make sure you get some fresh air. You know, we, uh, we've been cooped up a little bit too, week too much this week, I think. So, of course, wear your mask, wash your hands. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll probably see you potentially soon, but we'll uh, we'll go from there. We'll see what happens.